Hey friends, you are with Kim Byers at The Celebration Shop and today we are going to make a simple but absolutely darling cake topper and we're going to decorate the wall behind the table that our cake is sitting on. Um, this is perfect for Mother's Day or for a birthday or just a spring party or I mean, Easter's over this year, but it could be really cute for Easter um, or a church social, just whatever you have going on. This could just be such a simple, simple, but darling idea to make someone's day. So let's hop over to Cricut Design Space. I'll show you how to, we're gonna pull it all together and then we'll hop over to the craft table. And if you've not already, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell and join me every week for new videos. And if you like what we're doing here today, make sure you give me a thumbs up. All right guys, let's go. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space. And so what I've done is I've just pulled in very simple cuts. These are leaves with a score line. And then these are just flower petals. Um, and I will give you access to, these are all Cricut files, so I can share this um, with you and give you access to these. But they're just simple cuts. So if you didn't want to use these, um, you could just search leaves over in images or you could search flowers and pick different types of flowers. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut these out and then attach them to paper fans. So it's going to, the paper fan is going to give the flower a lot of dimension. And then these design elements are just going to pop on top of that. It's going to make it really, really cute. So again, super simple. I put them the colors that I wanted them to be. So like a pink and then a yellow. And I'm going to separate these um, with a foam adhesive square to give it additional height to kind of make it pop out. And I'll show you how to do that. And then these leaves have a score line down them. If you're using an Explore Air too, then there's a, a scoring tool. It's only a couple of bucks and I'll put a link to it down below, but there's a scoring tool you use that, with that machine. And then if you have the maker, there are um, scoring wheels that you can use. Um, but candidly, if you don't have either one of those, just delete the score and then you can, I'll, I'll actually show you how to do it. So you could take a um, butter knife and make a score on it. So I'll show you that when we get over to the craft table. Okay, so now all, everything's set up. And so let's go ahead and select make it. Okay, on the mat, we are going to have just the one floral and then we'll have um, the, the other centerpiece of the floral. Now I'm using this as a cake topper. But if you wanted to use this and decorate all of the background um, honeycomb fans, you could do that as well. What I chose to do is I chose to put these two pieces on the cake topper and then I'm using the leaves behind the honeycomb fans for everything on the wall. So we can select continue. Okay, and this is where you choose your um, device. And now we can choose our material and of course we are just cutting paper today so we're already set to paper we have the fine point blade so let's hop over to the craft table and we'll put everything together for the mat and then we'll cut here we are on the craft table and let me show you what we're going to work with today so i have my glue gun i have a green cricut mat I have my clear acrylic ruler, which I use for everything. We're going to be using 3D foam adhesive squares, and I love these for paper crafts. And then I have a couple of wooden dowels, and I have my honey cones, and these are six inch honey cones. Um, I use them for a lot of paper um, party kind of craft things, beautiful and super inexpensive. And then I have a stack of pastel papers. So for the honey cones, I'm going to put links down below to everything, um, but I actually got these at Party City along with the um, garland honey cones that you'll see in the photography as well. Okay, so let's move everything out of the way and go ahead and set up our mat and I'll take you over to the Cricut Explore Air 2. Okay, so I've cleared everything away and I actually forgot to show you this. So this is my paper trimmer um, and I use this for every type of material that I cut for the most part. So like iron-on, paper, vinyl, and I use it because it keeps a nice straight edge and it helps me to save on materials so I'm using a remnant piece of the pink and we want a 4 by 4 square so let's measure this and just make sure so we have our 4 by 4 on the yellow I need a, a 3 by 3 so these are 12 inch by 12 inch sheets 
So we'll go three and you can pull it down to the actual three mark, which is fantastic, right? So you don't waste any material and then just pop it in. Make sure it butts up right up against it and then you can just come down to the bottom and pick it up. Okay, and then I need, um, with the green, I need a half sheet. Okay, so now we want to place the paper onto the green mat. Okay, and we'll take it over to the machine and cut. Okay, so here we are with our Cricut Explore Air 2, and this is the lavender Cricut Explore Air. So we load our mat, and we want to make sure that the dial is set on cardstock. Okay, and then we simply select go. Okay, it's as simple as that. Unload the mat and it just pops right off. Okay, so now we're going to load our green material. And this is the one that requires us to score it. So we're gonna take our scoring stylus and put that in clamp A, and you put it down, did you hear it pop, and you can no longer see the arrow key, and you close the clamp, and then we select go. Okay, unload. I'm gonna go ahead and take out my scoring stylus. And close it back and now that I'm done with all of my cuts I'm gonna close keep the dust out and I actually like to keep it covered too for those of you with a scoring stylus um, for your machine then you don't have to do this part obviously because it's already scored for you the camera is probably not going to pick it up but when we take it off of the mat you'll be able to tell because it'll easily fold so this is a bone folder if you do not have a scoring stylus and you have a bone folder or if you don't have a bone folder and you have a simple butter knife you can still do this same thing um, again of course the scoring stylus is much simpler but if you don't have it yet so I just use my acrylic ruler so some sort of a straight edge I put it at the point or the tip of the leaf somewhat down the center of the leaf and then you just take the pointed edge of the bone folder or your butter knife and then drag it along that line to the point now you don't want to go all the way to the end of the leaf so you want to be somewhere about three quarters of a way and so you just give it a score and you can score it twice just make sure that you go over the same line um, that you did the first time okay so because we already have our score there we're just going to go ahead and take our paper off of the mat and paper weeds so easily and if you are not confident, um, you can use a scraping tool or something. But what I like to do is turn my mat over, bend the mat, not the material, and pop off my paper. Okay, so there are all of our leaves. And then there is the score for each of these. Again, it's probably kind of hard to see, but when you start to bend the leaf, see it just gives it a little bit of dimension. Okay, so this is what a honeycomb fan looks like when you get it in the mail, and you just simply open them up. And I tend to keep mine and use them for project after project. That's why you see a piece of wax paper and adhesive on the back. Um, so they just fold up so simply, and then if you do have anything sticky on it, um, little wax paper works great but what I do is I close it and then I um, put a paper clip on it instead of adhesive here so that I can actually fold them again so this is going to be our cake topper element right so the flower for the topper and we're going to use large leaves with it and we have a center element that we're going to put here and then the yellows I'm using these for the background flowers so I have a honeycomb fan, and I also have this little honeycomb ball. Um, these are really fun to look, put the small leaves on and make, you know, like other little, I like um, having dimension and a variety of sizes when we do like a wall. Um, so that's why I have the little honeycomb balls and the fans. 
Okay, so then let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to put together um, the cake topper. So this, these are the two elements that we have from the flowers, and I've gone ahead and attached them with 3D foam adhesive squares. So they're really just peel and stick, so it's that simple. Okay, so we have that piece. Now what we want to do is we want to take a little touch of hot glue to the center of our fan. And then we will attach the paper and it dries within seconds. So voila. And then the next thing that we want to do is we want to take our um, leaves and we want to attach those to the back of the fan. And it's fragile. Um, and actually what I had done before with this particular fan is I had used, um, these are like little glue dots. And if you have glue dots and not a um, hot glue gun, you could do that as well. And then again, you could use the fan over and over again by putting wax paper on it. So, but we wanna just take our leaves and attach them to the back of the fan. Oops. And we'll do two. And again, you can use the hot glue or you can use this. Now what I wanna do though is I want to put a dowel rod onto the back of the flower. And this is what will go down into your cake. So what we're gonna do is lay that down and then we'll put a little bit of hot glue on our dowel. and we'll attach it to the back of our cake topper and wait a few seconds and it will all perfect. It's gonna be so cute. So let's set that to the side and then we're gonna do the same thing um, with the leaves and let's just use hot glue because I have it out. We'll put the two leaves together and then we'll attach them to the back of the honeycomb. Now the honeycomb can close like this if you were using it for garland, which I did some of that, but this is just gonna be a little floral to put on the wall. And so then we will use, I tend to use small pieces of scotch tape to put things like this on the wall because I found that I, they don't you know, damage my wallpaper, um, excuse me, my paint when I pull them off. So. We'll do that and then we'll go ahead and put the large leaves on the yellow and I'll show you. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that idea. I've put links down below to all the things that we used today and the resources that I have for like the other things besides the crafting items. And I hope that you will hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you get notified every time I have a new video coming out. It's at least once a week, usually twice a week, sometimes three. <laughs> so I hope you will uh, join me back here for more crafting ideas and you guys have fun. See you next time.